Lesson 8.1 is about similarity in right triangles. So the first uh, theorem that we learned today is about a right triangle. If I take a right triangle, like I've got up here, triangle um, ACB, and I, or ABC, or whatever, uh, and I take an altitude from the right angle to the opposite side, so I hit the side AB at a right angle with an altitude, I actually divide that big triangle into two smaller triangles that are both, that are similar to each other and similar to the original triangle ABC. So if I take that big triangle and let's flip it around, and so we'll put the, um, the B up here at the top and the right angle C on the right side of the bottom and the angle A here. What we find is that the two smaller triangles, and I'll label them triangle one and triangle two, are actually similar to that triangle. If I'm, I'm going to draw them in the same position. So first, let's take triangle one, and I'll redraw that here in the position, at its same position as the original. Uh, and I'll, so I'll put this right angle here. This is where the N is. And then I have uh, the A here and the C at the top. Okay, and then I'll take triangle two, so that's triangle one, the small triangle one. And um, then I'll take the other one, the other triangle, and I'll redraw that uh, with the B at the top. And right angle down in the bottom, so this is the C. No, this is the N. And this is the C. Okay, so it and that's um, that's this one. So that's triangle two of the smaller triangles. And I have this is the whole triangle, the original big one here. What I've got is that all three of these are similar to each other. Okay, meaning their angles are identical and their um, side lengths are proportional. Now, because of this theorem, other relationships will follow, and we'll actually be able to solve for missing side lengths based on this proportionality. Okay, now we need to learn about the concept of geometric mean. A geometric mean between two numbers, and in this case, let's say the two numbers, let's call them A and B, is the number that has the same relationship, A has the same relationship to the geometric mean as that mean has to be. So in other words, the ratio of A to X, if X is the geometric mean, is the same as the ratio of X to B. And how could I find that number that lies somewhere between A and B? Because it's not the same as a pure average, as an arithmetic mean. It's called a geometric mean. So it makes this proportion true. So what I can do is cross multiply and solve for this proportion for X. So across multiplying x times x, I get x squared equals a times b. So then taking the square root of both sides, I get x is equal to the square root of a times b. And this is sort of just the shortcut formula that we'll always use um, we don't have to always set up the proportion, although it's important to understand that it comes from a proportion. So the geometric mean of a number is the square root, or I'm sorry, the geometric mean between two numbers is the square root of the product of the two numbers. So as an example, let's say I want to find the geometric mean between 3 and 48. Okay, so I know that using the formula, that this should be equal to, the geometric mean of x should be equal to the square root of 3 times 48. So I'm going to factor out 3 times 48 into its prime. So 3 times, now 48 is uh, 6 times 8, so 2 times, I've got 2 times 2 times 2, or 3 times 16 times 3. So in terms of perfect squares, there's one, there's one, 
And actually, if I could take these threes together, there's one. So a three comes out, a two comes out, and a two comes out, and I get uh, a 12. So nothing left under the radical. And this makes sense because, as we can see, when we go back to check this, 3 is to 12 as 12 is to 48 because 3 to 12 is a 1 to 4 ratio and 12 to 48 is a 1 to 4 ratio. So that's how you find geometric mean. Use this formula. The geometric mean is equal to the square root of the product of the two values. Okay, next would be a corollary to the first uh, theorem that we learned about how an altitude uh, drawn from the right angle of a right triangle to the hypotenuse uh, divides the hypotenuse and divides the triangle into other similar, smaller triangles. Um, because of that, in this case, um, the, uh, the ratio here of uh, 5 to the segment of the altitude, that's x, is the same as the ratio as x is to the segment, the other part of the hypotenuse, that's the 20. So in other words, x is the geometric mean between 5 and 20. So the length of x, the altitude, will be equal to the square root of the product 5 times 20, which is the square root of 100, which in this case is 10. And we can easily see how if we replace the x with a 10 in the original ratios, oops, how that holds true. So that's the cor corollary um, about altitude length. It's the geometric mean between the two portions of the hypotenuse. Okay, now the second corollary of the theorem that we learned about the right triangle being divided into similar triangles by the altitude is this one that has to do with, with, with this is about the legs, the length of the legs, not the hypotenuse. It turns out, well, what we do is if we find the length of the whole hypotenuse, which in this case is 9, I used easy numbers, 9 plus 16, or 25. It turns out that x, this, um, the length of this leg up here, x, is the geometric mean between the portion of the leg of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to that leg, the 9, and the 25. So x is the geometric mean of 9 and 25 in this case. So it's the segment of the hypotenuse uh, adjacent to the leg, to, uh, and then the whole hypotenuse of 25. So x is the square root of 9 times 25. Now, of course, those are both perfect squares, so we'll have a 3 will come out, and a 5 will come out, so we get 3 times 5, or 15. So that's the value of x. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side to find the other leg. Now, to find the other leg y, we do the same thing, except that we use the section or the segment of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to that leg that the y is on. So y is the geometric mean between the 16, that segment of the hypotenuse, and the total hypotenuse length of 25. Again, I used easy numbers. These are both perfect squares. So a rational 4 will come out, and a rational 5. So I'll have a 4 times 5, or 20, is the length of that side. Now, just lastly for practice, remember that the altitude is the geometric mean between those two segments of the hypotenuse, the 9 and the 16. So if we wanted to find the length of that altitude, again, it's the square root of 9 times 16 which a 3 will come out and a 4 and multiply together. So the length of that altitude is 12. Okay, so let's try one grand example that, um, that uses all of the formulas, all of the geometric mean formulas that we've learned um, with respect to the proportional um, sides of these similar right triangles. So anyway, I see I've got a um, right triangle, and the hypotenuse is divided into segments x and x plus 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is add those together, just to show myself that the total length of the hypotenuse is 2x plus 1. 
Okay, so I think first let's find um, y, which is going to be the altitude length. So I know that y is going to be the geometric mean between x and x plus 1. Well, that doesn't do anything for me because I've got x and y. I need to find a value. Same with z. I can't do anything with z because when I solve for z, I'll, I'll have x in my answer. So I look for places where I've just got x's and numbers, and that is going to focus me on this leg over here that's x plus 2. Now I know that that leg of x plus 2 is, is the geometric mean between the part of the hypotenuse uh, adjacent to that leg, which is this one right here, x, and the 2x plus 1. So this is equal to the square root of the product x times 2x plus 1. Okay, so a technique that we'll learn in class that, to um, solve an equation that has square roots in it is to do the inverse of taking the square root, which is to square both sides of the equation. Okay, and get that this expression, x times 2x plus 1, out from under the radical. So on the left, remember when I square x plus 2, I get, it's really, I'm taking x plus 2 times x plus 2. That's a binomial squared, and this is what it means. You have to foil it together. So on the left, you're going to have x squared plus 2x plus 2x when you foil this, so plus 4x plus 4. And on the right side, you'll just get that x times 2x plus 1 out. Okay, so the inverse of taking the square root is to square something. So now on the right, I have 2x squared plus x. So I'm going to simplify this. It's a quadratic equation. Get everything on one side set equal to 0. So if I subtract x squared from both sides, I'll have a 1x squared on the right. And I'll subtract 4x from both sides. So I'll have a negative 3x. And I'll subtract 4 to have a negative 4. So this is easy to factor now. This is going to factor to x minus 4 and x plus 1. So my solutions are going to be a positive 4 or a negative 1. However, when I look up here and see that in my original x is a side length, x can't be a negative 1. I can't have sides of negative or zero values as length. So I'm going to reject the negative 1 and I know now that x is 4. So definitely I can say that x is equal to 4, and now I can fill in values every place x was. So x plus 2, if x is 4, then x plus 2, this side is 6. And this piece right here is a 4. And this piece right here is a 4 plus 1, or a 5. And that would make this 2x plus 1 would be equal to a 9. Okay, actually, now I've relabeled everything with the values in where x used to be, and now it's easy to solve for the y and the z. The y, we know, is the geometric mean between uh, the segment, two segments of the hypotenuse, the 4 and the 5. So y is equal to the square root of the product, 4 times 5. So y is equal to the square root of, well, so y is equal to 2 times the square root of 5. Okay, so that's y. And then for z, z is equal to the geometric mean of the segment of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to it, the 5, times the whole hypotenuse length of 9. So a 3 will come out. So z is equal to 3 times the square root of 5. Okay. And that is it.